God bless you one more time. We're glad to be with you. Glad to have this opportunity to teach you. Teach you not of our own accord, but through the leading and the guidance of the Blessed Holy Spirit. Superintendent Janice Battersby and myself, we wanted to begin to teach you from what I shall term strategic lessons in nature. Strategic lessons in nature. And as I was thinking about this this morning, God told me, you know, he just speaks to you just like you hear. He knows how to talk to each one of us. And he said to me, Maria, <laughs> he said, you ever known a plant to want a sex change? <laughs> you ever known an ant to want to be a transgender? I said, of course, I said, no. And he said, that's why I've instructed you to look at nature and to look at the animal kingdom and to understand how I've called you to be. So again, with that in mind, we're going to be dealing with strategic lessons in nature. And the lesson for today is the Venus flytrap. The Venus flytrap. Let me begin by providing some scriptural basis for this series uh, that we'll be teaching from. And this is the NIV version, Romans 1, 20 and 21. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, mm -hmm. being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. So the lessons are there. Yes. God said, just look around. The lessons are there. They are. But because of how they want to do things, they're going to become dark into those lessons. Yes. And then just this scripture here, these verses from Job, Job 12, 7 through 10. It reads, but ask the animals and they will teach you or the birds in the sky and they will tell you or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, or let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature and breath of all mankind. Amen. Again, you know, that's just going to cause us to look at nature all the more. Yes. And say, God, what are you teaching us through this? So, Superintendent, the Venus flytrap, here we go. <laughs> I received a, an email or a Facebook message from a church member. And in it was, uh, he, he gave a, a passage from the movie God's Not Dead. Mm -hmm. And it said this, People sin because sometimes the devil allows people to live a life free of trouble because he does not want them to turn to God. Their sin is like a jail cell, except it's all nice and comfy, and there doesn't seem to be any need to leave. Mm. The door is wide open. Then one day, time runs out, and the cell door slams shut, and suddenly, it's too late. It's a trick of the enemy. Come on, people, open your eyes. And the scripture that he sent along with this is, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so having read that, mm -hmm. this is when Pastor and I started communicating <laughs> once again. And the emphasis came up about the Venus flytrap. So I don't know if you have ever seen footage of a Venus flytrap. But that's what came to mind in reading this. And so we decided that we're going to examine the Venus flytrap mm -hmm. and liken it to us in our state, in our sinful state, and how sin traps us. Mercy. A little bit and a little more and a little more until we are trapped. Yes, yes. And what you read, 
uh, from that gentleman. Uh, once I looked at the footage of the Venus flytrap, I'm like, wow, this is an exact uh, demonstration of what he's described. Yes. And I think it's so powerful. And we ought not miss that when God shows us something, we share it with people. And this is why we are here to talk about this Venus flytrap and show you the analogy. And you know what? I pray that your eyes are opened, your understanding is enlightened, so that you can actually hear what we're saying and understand the message, the vital lesson for such a time as this. Such a time as this. And the thing is, is that when we examine it, we start to look at nature we're going to pull an example out of the scriptures from the Old Testament, but I'm sure you and I and Pastor can see our own selves in the same situation. I said it before, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. And so what some people may say is an old, dusty, irrelevant book is very much an example, has tons of examples for us to follow so that we live a life that is pleasing to God and that will ensure our eternity Amen. with him. Amen. And, and you just said something right there. You said, so that it ensures our eternity with him. You know, we bring back that familiar verse, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, gave his only begotten son, yes. that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And what we see happening with the Venus flytrap is the very picture of the animus plan to entrap its prey. Yes. Never to escape again. Never to experience the freedom of the gospel message that God has for us. So I'm going to let you take it because I've read this thing. I'm excited about it. You know, the imagery is amazing. It's amazing. Yep, it really is. And um, let me give you the scientific name. I'm a science teacher, so look, listen to it. And so the scientific name is Dianea Masipula. Now, what got me was the Masipula. <laughs> this plant has muscle. <laughs> you yeah. hear me? Yep. yep. Because one of the things I know as a scientist is that the naming of plants and animals goes back to Latin. And so we learned Latin at the Berkeley Institute. And so I'm always captivated because, of course, muscipula would have to then be a derivative term from muscle. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, superintendent, we as Christians think that we can muscle the devil. We mm -hmm. think that we're stronger than the devil. Now, that is not true. That's right. Only through the power of the Holy Ghost through Jesus Christ, can we be empowered yes. to defeat the plans of the enemy? Otherwise, in that, don't say things like, bring it on, devil. No, 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 no. Nope. No, no. You better say, Holy Ghost, help me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Because the adversary, he's an adversary, and he is a worthy adversary that hath taken down many a prey. And so we want to be aware of the fact that this is no game. No. God does not have in creation and nature the Venus flytrap for naught. There's a lesson, Superintendent. We um, were examining the Venus flytrap and the behavior out of it. And I, I believe you may have something oh, more gosh. on yes. that. Yes. Um, what intrigued me in looking at the footage and the operation of the Venus flytrap is that it secretes a serum that smells sweet. Mm -hmm. Flowers, very few of them, there are some, but not many, will secrete an odor that is offensive to its prey. True. It wants to attract its mm -hmm. prey. Mm -hmm. So it's going to, first of all, it's a very pretty looking plant. Flowers are made to attract. That's how they are pollinated. They attract and insects who then carry pollen from flower to flower. So the Venus flytrap is very pretty yes. looking plant. Yes. And yes. it's 
still. It doesn't move much. It attracts its prey. Mm -hmm. It secretes this sweet nectar. Mm -hmm. And the insects will come to the plant and they will land on it. Yes. And they will move around on it. Now, on the inside of this Venus flytrap are hairs sticking up. And what I found interesting is these hairs aren't close together. They are in different areas on the plant. Mm -hmm. And what this plant is waiting for is for the hairs to be stimulated. That's right. That's right. That's a word right oh, there. Yeah. Well, let me, let, me, let me interrupt you right here. Yeah. Because what we're talking to, you got to picture it, is a plant that really deals with emotions. Mm. Motion. Emotions. You know, if a leaf piece of dust lands on it, well, the dust isn't going to move. It wants something that is emotion. Yep. And many times, human beings get entrapped in sin because we're going through something emotional. Oh, yeah. We feel a certain way. We're lacking something. Uh, something didn't go our way. We're grieved because, for example, female, I should have been married by now. I should have had a child by now. Why hasn't it happened for me? And what can happen is, is those emotions can attract us to somebody who is actually a trap. <laughs> I know there are a lot of people that can identify yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah. And, and here's the thing. God identifies with that. Yes. And so, therefore, this is not a message of condemnation. It's a message of revelation. Mm -hmm. So that you and I can understand that in our emotionalism, stand still for a moment. Be still. Be still. Stop running around. Be still. So the Venus flytrap, there, there's a, 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 in study I found out that the advice is, if you, could, if you could give advice to that fly, would be that once you've stimulated the, the hairs on the bed, on the Venus flytrap, stay still. Yep. Because there is a timing mechanism yes. that is placed within the very nature of the Venus flytrap. If one touch, it won't bother you. Just like sin. <laughs> you, wow. You, you do it that one time. But I only did it one time. And you think that you'll never be attracted. I went, I, what? I drank for the first time and it was a mess. I'll never do that again. You know, I was only with them one time. I'll never do that again. I told a lie. I gossiped only one time. But sin has, and you said it, an attractive nature. Oh, yeah. It's pretty. If sin wasn't pretty, who would be dealing with it? That's right. If sin wasn't attractive, why in the world would we do it? Would we be prone to wonder? You know, that old yes, hymn. Yes. Prone to wonder. Lord, I feel it. Prone, prone to, to leave the God, the God I, I love. love. But then he goes on and says, Lord, Lord, here's my heart. Take, Take and seal it. it. Yes. Seal it to thy courts above. Because if we rely on the lower courts, which is our feelings, emotions, it's going to be more than one touch. Because you're going to say, that was good. I'm going to go back again. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> and that's exactly what happens with that Venus flytrap. That's right. The reason being is, the Venus flytrap, once it's closed, it takes days to reopen. Absolutely. Once it's closed, the digestive uh, process begins. That's right. That's right. And so it's not going to waste valuable time if a piece of dust or something falls on it. Yes. And doesn't move. It's not going to close. Yeah. It, it won't secrete the enzymes. No. It's like that's a waste of time. That's a waste of time. Yeah. But if that insect decides to stay and hang out in that environment. Lord have mercy. And move around. If the hairs are stimulated, 
more than once within 20 seconds, it, yeah. sh it closes. It's like the Venus flytrap saying, oh yeah, you, you want to hang around me? You want to play with me? All right, all right. Go ahead. Not one second, not two. Now, I'm going to give you time. I'm going to give you time. And we know with a fly, let's take a fly. You know, if one comes in the house, it, don't, it doesn't stay anywhere for more than a second. That's right. If you try to get it, it's gone. So if that fly stays in that sweet Venus fly trap, mm -hmm. then it's mad its match. Yep. And it will meet its demise. That's right. And that's what sin will do. That's what sin will do. And the, the, the plant closes. And you'll actually see that in footage mm -hmm. where it, all of a sudden the insect knows I'm in trouble. Mercy, mercy. And it will actually try to get out. Mm -hmm. But it's the plant seals and then stays shut and the digestive process begins. And it stays closed for days. Correct. And once that digestive process is over, there's only the shell of the insect left. The Venus flytrap makes sure as that fly keeps moving, it keeps secreting the enzymes because it's saying, oh yeah, you've got more life in you, I want that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, where, where Jesus Christ has come to give us a life and that more abundantly, the front part of that verse, John 10, 10 says, but the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yes. And this is what we see happening yes. with this Venus fly trap. That any bit of nutrition, <laughs> whatever is valuable in you. Listen, you could have been in the church five days, five years, 15 years. If you've been in the church 15 years and you get in this trap, He's going to digest you longer and take every bit of nutrition mm. of those 15 mm. years mm. that you spent in the presence of God. Mm. And he delights, you hear me, he delights in destroying the child of God. Yes. And he will torment you. I want you to speak to that tormenting part. We talked about it as, as the shell of the um, Venus flytrap goes from concave to convex. Yeah. What, what, what's the torment part? And the torment is that the insect is in there, and if you, you see pictures of the Venus flytrap, it doesn't close completely. So the insect is trapped and can still see Mercy. outside, Mercy. but can't get there because mm. it's trapped. And so it's feeling the pain of digestion because these insects are alive. Mm -hmm. So they're feeling being eaten alive. Wow. They can see the outside freedom but they can't get there. They will never get there. And this is what we want to try to convey to those of you who now feel trapped in your sin. Mm. There is a way out. Oh yeah. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. No matter how trapped you feel in your situation, there is a way out. And it is through the blood of Christ. I'm telling you, I'm so glad that Jesus shed his blood, oh, yeah. that, that the plan of the enemy to take us out forever was balanced and overridden by the blood yeah, of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Yes. And the blood is the remedy. I guess we could say the blood is the key that opens back up that trap. And so nobody can feel like we have done so much wrong. We have been in this sin so long. We are not worthy. Oh, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. You are more than worthy. More than worthy. More than worthy. You are the exact reason that Jesus Christ shed his blood so that you would not be digested by the evil enzymes of our enemy, the devil. The devil's real. Yes, he is. And during this day and time, as I said in the beginning, it is our prayer that through such examples as this Venus flytrap, that the people will understand that God's plan is not for you to suffer and die. No, but it is so that you will accept his son, Jesus Christ, yes. as your Lord and Savior and escape the very uh, uh, pangs of death, the trap of death. 
such as we see in the Venus flytrap. So I wanted to share an Old Testament story with you. And it is the story of Abram and his nephew, Lot. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't go into the story in full detail. However, I'm going to try and, and shorten it for you. And my references, if you're taking references, read Genesis chapter 13 and also Genesis chapter 19. You can read between from 13 to 19 if you wish, but I'm just going to pull a few scripture verses out and references. Abram was the man who God wanted to have a relationship with. He wanted to be the God of Abram's line and his descendants. And out of Abram is where we get the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. Abram was called out from where he lived because everyone around him worshipped other gods. And God wanted a relationship with Abram. So God called him out. Come away from your family. Mm -hmm. I want to have a relationship with you. Abram took along his nephew, Lot. Abram's brother was dead, and so Lot, he took him under his wing. Abram became very rich, therefore so did Lot. Mm -hmm. They became so rich that their herdsmen could no longer work together. The herdsmen of Lot and the herdsmen of Abram started fighting, and so they needed to separate. So Abram took Lot and said, listen, look around you. Wherever you want to go, I will go in the opposite direction. But you choose. Now here's the older man mm -hmm. giving the younger man yeah. free reign to decide wherever he wants to go. Mm -hmm. Abram didn't care. That, that's the part that amazes me is Abram said, you go one way, I'll go the other. Lot. Yeah looked mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. see what was the best. And, and just a point of note there, Abraham is following the same strategic principle that God told him to. Go, you don't know where you're going, exactly, but I will make a way for you. Mm -hmm. And so he, right here is saying the same thing. Look, Lot, you choose what you want. Same God that told me to go is going to have me to go this time again. And God's favor will be with me That's right. once again. God will take care of oh, me. Oh, yes, he will. And Lot should have lived by those same principles. Mm -hmm. But Lot decided to make his own choice. Ah. And he looked and he saw the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. Wicked cities. And Lot decided to live near Sodom. Not in Sodom, mm -hmm. but near just, Sodom. Just near it, near it, near it. So that's where Lot took his family and went to live, near Sodom. Mm -hmm. Now, Lot came out of a family that was following God and decided he wanted to live near a city of sin. Fourteen years later, we read that the kings of Sodom, Gomorrah, and the surrounding cities were attacked by other kings, and they took the people captive. Of those people that they took captive was Lot, who was now living in Sodom. Mercy. No longer near, in Sodom. Abram heard about it, gathered 318 of his people, mm -hmm and defeated the kings and rescued Lot and his family. Yeah. Took them out of Sodom. Years later, some angels come to visit Abram because they're going down to Sodom and Gomorrah because the Lord has heard about their sinful lifestyle. Now that's a whole nother Another story. program, <laughs> yep. The angels went into Sodom and there sitting at the gate mm -hmm. of Sodom was Lot. Now, let me tell you a little bit about that gate. Yes. The gate is where the officials sat. Yes. The politicians, the lawmakers. Correct. Lot was sitting in the gate. And so now, because when you first started, we said he was near. Yes. 
He was in. Yes. He's out. Yes. Now he's over. Now he's over. So he's, he's governing this city. And when you're over something, it's more powerful than any of the other entities we just mentioned. Yes. So let's hurry. He's setting the standard, which is not very high mm -hmm. in the eyes of God. Mercy. Lot recognizes these angels. He still got the training from Abram within him. Mm -hmm. The spirit of God is still in him. He does not want to leave these angels outside in the street because he knows the nature of this city. That's right. He's living in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he invites them to his home. They go to his home and the men of the city, hear me again, the men of the city hear about these angels mm -hmm. and decide to come to Lot's house because they want to have sexual relations with these men that are in Lot's house. That's right. They didn't know that they were angels. This was, as they would say, fresh meat. Lot offers his own daughters to these men because he knows that these other men that have come are angels. Lot offers his own daughters. Mm -hmm. What kind of man would offer his daughter? Not just to a man, but to the men of the city. That's like a gang rape. Yeah. But that's the standard that Lot is living at. And he's desperate because mm -hmm. he knows that these men that have come to see him are angels. Yeah, and so it's like this. This is when the world says, you're a hypocrite. Because you looked at this lifestyle. You know, the men of this lifestyle had no issue coming to your house. But now because these angelic men of God are here, you're going to offer the men, who obviously want men, you're going to offer them your, your, your daughters. Which they didn't want. Which they didn't want. And in fact, they actually said that to Lot. Who are <laughs> you? You're a foreigner. And you want to judge us? You've been in this. You know you've tolerated this behavior. And now all of a sudden you want to be righteous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and if we go back to the Venus flytrap, that's where the, the touch, sensory nerves have been stimulated. Yes. Lot, you've been stimulating this all this time. All this time. The <laughs> stimulated by living near Sodom. That was one. Yeah. Then in Sodom. Is yes. Two. You were taken out, but you went back. And back to the trap. That's three. Now you're trying to be all legalistic. That's four. Because all of a sudden now your conscience mm -hmm. is bothering you. Emotions. So the men reject Lot's daughters. Mm -hmm. The angels blind the men of the city. Now, that's amazing because they're blinded twice. They're Sad. blinded by their lust, number one. Yes. And then they're blinded by the angels of God, number Physically. two. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Double blindness. Hmm. But Lot and his family, they are told to leave because God is going to destroy the city. Mm-hmm. Amazingly enough, Lot's daughters were pledged to marry men in the city. And when they tried to warn them about this, those men laughed. Hmm. They thought it was a joke. The word of God is a joke. <laughs> Many see it that way. Many hear the messages coming from God's servants, God's teachers, and preachers, prophetic voices in the land. Yet they're twice blinded. Twice blinded. In that they won't listen can see, and even though it's right in front of them, the evidence, the evidence of sin, they refuse to see. And hence, we're going to have the result of that fly in the Venus fly trap. The, the trap was closing. And thank God that the angels were able to speak to Lot. Mm -hmm. And because of the grounding, Train up a child in the way he should go. Yes. The grounding that Lot had with Abram, he was able to listen mm -hmm. and hear. Mm -hmm. He hesitated in leaving. He was a politician. He was a big shot in <laughs> Sodom. Why would he want to leave? He was forced out. He, his wife, and his two daughters. And then came fire and brimstone upon Sodom. Lot's wife looked back. 
She was the wife of a politician. She had a good life. She looked back. She had no idea where she was going, and she longed for what she knew. Wow, wow. Longed for all the trappings. Trap. Yeah, all the trappings of the glamorous life. Oh, the money, the parties, uh, you know, the getting together with the who's who. It's not worth losing your life. It's not worth being trapped and never being able to escape because you had to go back to that lifestyle. That's that sweet nectar, mm -hmm. that, that sweet, sweet, attractive oh, yeah. lifestyle. <laughs> but that's just for the here and now. His wife was turned into a pillar of salt and Lot was left with his daughters who because of their desperation, like you said at the beginning, Pastor, mm -hmm. there were no men around, no husbands. They wanted children. They wound up committing incest with their father to have children. And those children became the very enemies yeah. of Israel That's right. generations later. I tell you, so when, when you do things out of order, it's a trap. You know, sometimes you will hear folks mention Wow, they had numerous wives in the Bible. And all. You know, that was not God's plan. Nope. That was the longing of their flesh, the trap, because they needed a son, because of this, because of that. Always a reason. Always a reason. Those reasons bring about consequences. And the reason that we're having issues today with the Venus fly trap of our society or I should say Venus fly traps, is because mankind yet desire to have their lustful needs yes. satisfied. Yes. And the devil will always supply that to satisfy your flesh. He will always oblige. Oh, oblige, absolutely. So we see that Lot eventually became swallowed up in that Venus fly trap. And we've I think we've touched about five of those hairs on the trap that it's now closing mm -hmm, in. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, the angels were there to pull him out. That's right. But like you said, Pastor, the consequences were already set. Already set. We have to be careful. What we are letting our children see. I as a parent, you as a parent... We may be able to escape. We may be able to rely on that information that we were given as children, yes. train up a child. However, if our children were never trained up and all they've seen is the other side, the Sodom, the Gomorrah, the nightlife, the freedom, the do as you desire, then that child, those children are less likely to be saved out of the Venus flytrap of sin because we never expose them to the goodness of God, Yes, only to the goodness of sin. And I'm, I'm going to say it again. According to our study, listen, the Venus flytrap, the reason that the fly is drawn there is because of the red collar. And the fruity smile, mm -hmm. the red color, the color of love. Love wins. Love wins. Which love? What, what love are you talking about? <laughs> this fly loved the scent and the color, and it cost this fly its very life. Every bit of nutrients, nitrogen, Mm. That fly head was pulled out of its system until it was an empty shell. It was a mere shell of what it used to be. And that's the plan of the enemy. Yes. That Bermuda will be a mere shell of what she used to be. And you know, it, some of the footage that I looked at, because I looked at several um, YouTube footages of the Venus flytrap, one of them showed the fly after the process was finished, mm -hmm. where the person filming it actually picked it up and crushed it. Crumpled. 
So when you talk about steal, kill, and destroy, that fly wasn't just dead. It was destroyed. There was nothing left on the inside. It was literally a shell. As a matter of fact, we could say, you know, I just came from a family funeral. Uh, we could say earth to earth, ash to ashes, and dust to dust. Yeah. Because essentially, that's what's released. The remnants, the decomposition, yes. the decay, has taken a week, five days to seven. Mm -hmm. But every bit of life that was in it is now removed. And the wind can now just yep. take it away. Take it away. That's not the life that God intended for us. If you go right back to the first chapter of Genesis, that's what God intended. Everything else after that is God trying to get back hmm. to that first chapter. Correct. It's amazing. Whatever you see, people, like you said, Pastor, they'll try to justify. There's multiple marriages in the Bible. There's slavery in the Bible. There's all sorts of things. When you read and understand that Bible, that's not God's plan. That's man's disobedience. That's right. That's that Venus flytrap. And if you're using that even now to justify what you're doing or what the world is doing, then you are caught in that Venus flytrap. It's a lie. It's attractive. It tells you everything you want to hear. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> it's freedom. But one day, it will close on you, and you will see the outside and not be able to get out. So true, so true. You know, I was reading, and I'm trying to find it here, um, a description. Because it actually says, it says that the plant sings. It lets out a sound, and wow. it's as if it's singing. And again, that's enticing the fly wow. to come to it. There's a sound. And the reason I liked it when I found it was because that singing speaks to the musical aspect of sin that usually pulls people away from God. And we're not going to discuss it in full detail tonight. <laughs> no, that's another one. <laughs> that's another one. <laughs> but we can see it in, we just had the Heroes Weekend, we had the Soka. But I'm telling you, as long as people uh, got the music going, you can't tell them that they're not okay. The enemy knows how to use music. And let's not forget that when the devil was actually Lucifer, son of the morning, yes. that the reason that he was able to entrap people, angels, entrap the angels to follow him is because he had a melodic sounding yes. voice. Said by his trade, ah. he was able to deceive them. That's right, that's right. So all these things, like Pastor said, they're wonderful. <laughs> People talked about what a wonderful time they had yeah. over Heroes Weekend. That's how sin works. Mm -hmm. They're not going to say they had a horrible time and they'll do it again. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Sin feels good, smells good, tastes good, sounds good. And we all have to admit it. We've all mm, been there. That's right. But there is a way that God has shown us out of that Venus flytrap. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're here tonight saying to you is when you understand the word of God, understand his original intent, always go back to God's original intent. He has provided a way for us to get back to his original intent. God is not willing. It's not his will that you should perish. You know, you're feeling entrapped, feeling lost, don't know what to do. But this is why God has chosen servants, that you can reach out. If you have a pastor already, you reach out to your pastor and you have that conversation because you don't want to remain in that trap too long because after a while, this is what we called it in the, back in the day, you're going to backslide. 
Yep. And you wouldn't even know how far you've slid back until all of a sudden, I don't have to, I don't have to go to church this week. I don't need to be with God's people. All of that to me is a part of a Christian being tickled, something they've heard that now has inclined them to remove themselves from God's presence. And I need for you to understand, we need for you to understand today, you don't have to stay there. That's right. Oh, you don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. No, 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 the potter, oh yeah, wants to put you back together yeah, again. again. That, that, that trap may have crushed you, mm. just misshaped you, but we know, this is the beauty of it, yes. we know the creator. Yes. Of the Venus flytrap. That's track. right. <laughs> <laughs> so he knows how to undo the damage or how to take you from that damaged place to a better place. And that's our message in all that we do. We are not here, I'll say it again, to condemn you, to say that you're a bad person. No, 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 no. We have all sinned. That's right. And come short of the glory of God. And just as I, superintendent, we desire the glory of God, it's for you too. So I don't want that trap falling and you just looking through it and seeing those Christians having a good time and getting mad. No, 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 no. Come on and join us. And that's our message to you. If you don't have a church home, you don't have a pastor to talk to, we are available and we offer you, I will always say it, we offer you Jesus. Amen. We offer you the only one that can save you out of the Venus trap of sin. He came to give his life so that you could have life more abundantly. Superintendent. I just want to say that one day we're all going to stand before the judgment seat and be judged. Those of us that have chosen Christ and those who have not. And those who have not are going to see what they've missed. Wow. Wow. That's looking through that trap. That's the ultimate. And not being able to get out. And we don't want anyone to miss no. eternal life with God and what he has for us. He's got a mansion for us. He's got streets paved with gold. I mean, we run around trying to put gold all over our bodies. We're going to be walking on this stuff. And Amazing. everything else from there. There mm -hmm. will be no sun because the glory of God will be Ooh. there. Do you really <laughs> want to miss that? What an experience. Now, I mentioned about five minutes ago, came from a family funeral. So I'm looking at the coffin, and I'm saying to myself, just what you said, I said, next time she gets up, <laughs> she can have a mansion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that coffin's a temporary box. Oh, yeah, not a condominium what? either, a mansion. What? <laughs> because she knew God. Yes. Had accepted Jesus, that on the other side, when Jesus Christ returns to catch away the living saints to meet them in the air, and when we, the living saints, are raptured up, I tell you what, <laughs> she's got a mansion. What a day. What a day. There'll be no need of the greater sun, the lesser moon, the lesser sun, the moon, because the very glory and essence yes. of Jesus will be the very continents of heaven. I don't know who would not, I'm getting excited right there. <laughs> I, I don't know who would not want to be in that number. Oh my, my. And my. this is why we're teaching this tonight. Yes. Yep. We're teaching this because we don't want you trapped. We don't want you lost. There's another way, and Jesus Christ is that way. Amen. I pray, I hope, we hope, oh boy, that you've gotten the essence of this lesson and that you choose, you make it your choice. We can't force you. You choose to make Jesus your choice. You choose that in a world, you can look around Bermuda, and you know it, you know it, you know it, Christian or not. You say, my God, things are getting darker in mm -hmm. this island. Mm -hmm. Be it political, social, education-wise, whatever, it's getting darker. I don't know how much time is left. I don't. And so before time turns into eternity, 
Why not give Jesus Christ your heart today? Amen. As a matter of fact, I feel it our responsibility that in case you're listening right now and you're saying, you know what? I want to do this right now. I want Jesus in my life right now. Well, we want to lead you in a prayer, a prayer of repentance where you can turn your life around and be welcomed into the family of God. Amen. Superintendent, why don't you lead in a word of prayer for that person who's making their decision right now? It would be my honor to do so. And all you have to do is hear this prayer, feel this prayer. If you want to even say it, say it, repeat it, and know that God is listening. This is the one prayer that he will answer for the sinner. Yes. So let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, I thank you that this is no coincidence that I am hearing this teaching right now. Lord, I want to have life with you. I am a sinner. I have sinned. Whatever I have done, you have seen it. But right now, Lord, I am confident. I have been told and I am confident that you will forgive every sin that I have committed. So I come to you, Lord, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. I believe that he died on the cross for me. I believe he shed his blood so that I would not have to shed my blood for the sins that I have committed. I believe that you are my creator, that Jesus Christ is my savior, and that your Holy Spirit is my comforter. I confess my sins to you, and I ask for your forgiveness through the blood of Jesus. Help me, Lord, to turn away from everything that has taken me off track. Help me, Lord, as the enemy will try to take me back, that I will get out of Sodom, that I will get out of the Venus flytrap of sin. Help me to find a church that will help me to learn about you and to live a life pleasing to you. Lord, I am nothing without you. And I have tried everything else. I want you. Thank you, Lord, for sending your son to die for me. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me of my sins. Thank you, Lord, for answering my prayer. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. 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 Well, if that was you and you accepted Jesus into your heart, we want to celebrate with Amen. you. Amen. Please reach out to us. You'll see our email address there. Um, let us know. Hey, there's a new name written out, written in glory. <laughs> and it's yours. And it's yours. And we get to party because we have a new brother, a new sister. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. We look forward to hearing from you. Well, thank you, Superintendent. Thank you, Pastor. I'm glad. I, you know, I just like it when God speaks to people. And they invite me into the conversation because <laughs> then I get to, uh, uh, as it were, springboard or for the excitement and the imagery. And then that's it. After that, I'm ready to go. And so we thank God for this time that we've had together. Yes. And we do believe that it's going to bring forth much fruit. Much fruit. Because it's a labor that we've done unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So until next time, until the next lesson from nature, you know what we're saying. Blessings, Blessings abound. abound.